ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين Indeed, all praise and thanks are for Allah. We praise and thank Him. We seek His help and we ask His forgiveness. We take refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and from our sinful deeds. Whoever Allah guides, no one can mislead. And whoever He leads to stray, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah. He is one having no partners. And I bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is His servant and His messenger. Peace and blessings of Allah be upon him and upon his family and his companions. I'm about to proceed. <coughs> now, as you know from the notification, the, the topic of today's khutbah's topic is Ramadan is over. The month of Ramadan, the blessed month, is over. And what next? What now, really? Um, so, some reflections, really. Um, But before we go into that, I, I just want to say that in our community, really, we uh, approached Ramadan in different ways. So you, see, you see different people approaching Ramadan in different ways, with different attitudes, different levels of practice. And uh, a few years back, I was, I was thinking about this, and, and I, I identified like four groupings, four categories, you see. Um, So I want to mention that, the, uh, because the advice we give has to be appropriate for each of these categories. And it's different advice for different groupings, you see. So if we, we have a group, you may say, I mean, there's quite a spectrum, as I say, but there's, there's a group where we might describe this group as the neglectful amongst us, or the negligent, yes? And we all fall into this. By the way, yes, we all fall into each of these groupings to some extent. You know, they're not... They're not very distinct, they're not discrete, yeah, they're, it's blurred, a bit blurred, but, and we all, we all fall into this to some extent, because we all are negligent or neglectful to some extent, because we all sin, yes, but I'm talking about people who, let's say, really didn't make much use of Ramadan, uh, Ramadan at all, so, you know, it, and, I mean, there are people from the community who don't really fast, or fast at weekends, we hear of this sometimes, you know, just you know, fast when they're not working, <laughs> even when they don't have uh, legitimate reasons for not fasting. So there are people who are not fasting. But there's also people who may fast, uh, but they don't pray. Not praying the five times daily obligatory prayers. I mean, of course, uh, fasting is obligatory for, for, um, for those without the exceptions. But also, uh, prayer is obligatory. So there are people who are fasting but not, pray, uh, not praying. So that's negligent or neglectful, you see. And then there are people who, for instance, are fasting and praying, maybe, but because, uh, as, as the Prophet Hassan described, uh, uh, because they don't give up certain things, yes, all they get, really, or, or they approach certain things in certain ways, all they're getting from their, uh, their fasting is hunger and thirst, and from their prayers, those extra prayers, sleeplessness. So, you know, just because we fast and, and pray, it doesn't mean that our, our uh, ibadah has been accepted. And this is something we should consider. You know, I mentioned this to the, the Sahaba. It's known that the Sahaba, they would, uh, for six months before Ramadan, they would be making dua that Allah makes it possible for them to reach Ramadan. You see? But then, for six months after Ramadan, apparently they would pray that Allah accepts their deeds, the deeds in Ramadan. You see? So we shouldn't ex assume automatic acceptance, you see? We're told in the Quran, وَدُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَعْمًا We're told, you know, you've heard this before, that call upon him with fear and hope, fear and longing. So we need a mixture. Okay, so, so there may be people who, yes, have gone through the motions, but actually benefited very little, you know, apart from hunger and thirst and sleeplessness. You see. Um, so that's, that's one grouping, okay. Uh, another grouping, which which uh, in the past used to be called 
the group people who were called Ramadan Muslims. You know, have you come across this? I mean, it's a bit rude, actually, in some ways. But I'm just, no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to offend anyone, of course. But actually, and we all fall into this to some extent, because, you know, we all increase our ibadah in Ramadan. Yes, alhamdulillah. You know, Allah SWT, he's, he cha- I mean, we know that the, the shayateen are chained up. We know that the doors of paradise are open, the gates of paradise, the gates of hellfire are shut. Makes a very big, big difference, isn't it? You know, it's extraordinary what, alhamdulillah, uh, some people amongst us can manage during the blessed month. Okay, so that's fine. You know, but, but there are people who they, they switch on the Islam or switch on the x-ray bada. But now this is the strange thing. As soon as Ramadan finishes, it's switched off. Really. And now, as I say, we all belong to this category, again, to some extent. Because none of us, none of us can sustain that level of ibadah, can we? You, know, you just have to look at, say, the masjids. You know, the same masjid where the, 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 the room was completely full. Yes, and for some people, for staying for two hours, two and a half hours in the evening for prayers, which weren't even, they weren't even obligatory. Suddenly, you don't see them at Isha. Maybe for the rest of the year. You know, we see this phenomenon. And I once counted, uh, actually, another masjid, one of the masjids I was involved with many years ago. I actually counted the numbers of people at, uh, I think it was a Fajr or Isha, I can't remember. It's a long time ago. Uh, before, uh, during Ramadan and straight after. And the number, it was one-tenth. One-tenth, you see. So nine-tenths of the community, uh, stopped, the men stopped coming to the, uh, the Fajr prayers or the Isha prayers, whatever it was, yes. You see, this is... Now, this is a bit strange, isn't it? It's a bit strange. But this, this is a grouping amongst us. <sighs> Another uh, grouping is, you might say, the high achievers, you see. There are people, alhamdulillah, from amongst us, there are people who may have emerged from Ramadan like sin-free. Really. Newborns. You know, these this wonderful opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us so that, you know, maybe through their prayers, uh, through their fasting, or through their prayers, or through just catching that one night of Laylatul Qadr, sin-free, all past sins forgiven, alhamdulillah. Now, really, that is, uh, I mean, people in that category, congratulations, alhamdulillah, you know, it's, uh, but there are also, there are some things we need to consider about this as well, even with the high achievers. Okay? So, some advice for them as well, inshallah. Okay. Now, here's an extraordinary thing. Uh, as I say, I was, I, I was thinking about this many years ago, maybe four or five years ago, I gave a khutbah on this, and I was looking for something from the, uh, from the sunnah, from the hadith, which I could use. And I found a hadith, <laughs> alhamdulillah, which covered all four, well, actually, I haven't mentioned the fourth category, I'll mention it in a minute, so all four categories, the fourth category I was going to say is probably the majority of us. The majority of us who, we don't belong to any of those categories that I've mentioned already in a big way, but we're somewhere in between, you know. So, you know, we're not the high achievers, but nor are we totally ne- negligent, yeah. We manage some things, but we didn't manage other things. Yeah, sort of somewhere in the middle. That's probably the majority of us, yeah. We set ourselves goals, and we, we, we didn't quite achieve them. But we achieved some things, you see. Alhamdulillah. So, anyway, so, uh, and I found this hadith, which, as I say, it covered all four of those categories. Amazingly. Amazingly. And I'll, I'll share this hadith with you. It's a very beautiful hadith. And, uh, and also, I should say that the, the beginning of this hadith is just three words, you see. The Prophet, he said, and it's a sahih hadith. He said, Saddidu wa qaribu wa abashiru. Three words. Now, the English translation of these three words in the source I was looking at, it's a, trust, a trustworthy source, it was like two or three lines on just those three words. And I, I, I couldn't understand. I couldn't understand how they went from those three words to uh, this, this description of, there was a mention of trying, moderation, balance, all sorts of things, yes? You know? Uh, so I asked a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, he's an Egyptian, Egyptian imam, and I'm not talking about Sheikh Mahmoud here, although he's a good friend of mine, alhamdulillah. But uh, another Egyptian imam, alhamdulillah, who I've known for many years, and he explained it to me. It's a beautiful explanation, and I want to share this with you. He said that these terms, those three terms, they can be applied to archery. They're used in archery, yeah? You know, bow and arrow and so on. We don't see much of it nowadays, but yes. Archery, and, and so, saddidu, he said, it's like take aim. This is how the hadith starts, so take aim. As the archer does. Yes? 
You, we must take aim. All right. Try. So try. And then, وَقَارِبُ Try and get near. You know, we don't just take aim arbitrarily or randomly. We take aim at a target, do we not? We've got to aim for the target. And very interestingly, the target in archery is the bullseye. Yeah, the highest. It's you aim, but what? For the middle. The bullseye is in the middle. So ideas of balance come into it. And archery required balance. And ideas of moderation come into it. You know, we know we're a community, uh, 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 justly balanced community. Ummatun wasat, we're told in the Quran. That, yes, that uh, people of the middle way. So, we take aim, and we try and get close. Yes, try and get, and we get close to this ideal of moderation, balance. Yes? But then it goes on, uh, like, be of good cheer. Be happy, like, be optimistic, hopeful. Be of good cheer. Because no one enters Jannah as a result of their own deeds. Okay. Now let me just say a little bit more before we proceed with the hadith. You know, very interestingly, when an archer lets go of the arrow, okay, it's out of his, his control or her control, is it not? Yeah? Once we've let go of the arrow, we can't control it. It might be heading for the bullseye, but there may be a gust of wind. And it will just shoot off, missing the target completely, perhaps. Now, one of the things the scholars have drawn from this is we shouldn't be too bothered about the results. You see? You know, those of us, for instance, who set ourselves all sorts of goals and aims and, in Ramadan, and, and maybe we were trying, but we failed. We didn't manage it. You know, the, the time, and so many people reported this this year. It, every year people report this, but it seems more and more that the time went so quickly. You know, the month just went. So maybe we failed in all those uh, things that we set ourselves, you see. But we shouldn't be so bothered about the results because once we've let go of the arrow, yes, we, we, ha we can't control it. You know, the results are in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands, you see. I mean, it's all in his hands, but, you know, we... we, we, we we shouldn't be too, too preoccupied with, did, did, did I manage this? Did I manage that? Yeah, we can learn from it, but we're not in control, let's say. Okay, so the Prophet said, so take aim, uh, try and get close, um, this idea of balance and moderation, and then, uh, but be of good cheer. Why? Because no one enters Jannah <laughs> as a result of their own deeds. And the people said, well, not, not even you, Ya Rasulullah and he said, not even I, were it not that I were wrapped, enveloped in Allah's rahmah. His mercy, you see, his compassion, his grace. So that's what counts. And it's very interesting, you know, the Christians, when I used to do, I used to do some, uh, as you know, some interfaith type work, we said that one of the things they used to criticize us for, they would say, oh, you Muslims, all, all you talk about is good deeds, doing deeds. You know, you acts of worship, you do, you do these. Whereas we believe that it's God's grace that saves us. And then we quote that hadith to them. You see, because we also have that same belief, actually. Yes, but we must do the deeds. This is where we differ. We can't just leave the deeds alone, because those are ways of approaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes? Like, you know, my uh, Prophet said that Allah says, My slave does not approach me with anything more beloved to me than that which I have made obligatory on him. Yes. That's how that hadith. And then he continues to approach me with the option until I love him. And then when I love him, I become his sight with which he sees, his hearing with which he hears, his hand with which he grasps or strikes, and his foot or leg with which he walks. It's a very beautiful hadith. But, so we've got to do the deed, but we must remember it's Allah's rahmah that saves us. So, you know, those, those of you, the high achievers, you know, don't, don't get smug about it. Don't think, alhamdulillah. Well, no, think alhamdulillah, but don't think, oh, I've managed so much. I deserve Jannah now. I deserve forgiveness. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve. Why do we deserve forgiveness? Yes? Allah gives. He forgives, though. So, and then the hadith goes on. And know that, um, and know that, uh, the most beloved acts, yes, the acts which are most beloved to Allah, are the 
consistent ones, the regular ones, even if small. Okay. So, with that hadith in mind, let's just have a very quick look at all those four categories that I mentioned. So, the negligent or the neglectful, or the, let's say the disobedient amongst us. You know, we, we've got to take our deen seriously. Really, this is what I would say. You know, come on, brothers and sisters, if you, if we, and we all belong to, as I say, to that category to some extent, but we've got to take our deen seriously. We're told in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ You know, I did, did not create jinn or mankind, humanity, except to worship me. We're here for purpose. There's a purpose. We're not here just to have, play, you know, have entertainment or fun and games or, or, you know, or strive for happiness. As we can wait for that, inshallah, you know, and there's a bliss, inshallah, which is, you can't compare the, the joys of this world to the joys of the hereafter. So we're here for a purpose. So if something is, 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 has been enjoined upon, we need to take it seriously. You know, are we not taking our deen seriously? If we, you know, if we're saying things like, oh, I'll fast when I fancy it, or, or you know, I'll just fast at weekends, are we taking our deen seriously? And it's, you know, we've got to do our bit. Like we're told in the Quran, uh, just after the mention of Ramadan, وَإِذَا سَعَلَكَ عِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ وَجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ دَعِذَ دَعْنْ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ You see that when my slaves ask you concerning me, Allah is saying to the Prophet ﷺ, indeed I am near. I respond to the call of the caller whenever he calls me. But then what? But let them respond to me and believe in me so that they may be rightly guided. Yes? So yes, of course, Allah subhanahu wa he's our Rahman, he's our Rahim, the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most gracious. He's Al-Ghafur and Al-Ghaffar, the, 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 full, he's full of forgiveness, the all-forgiving and so on. Al-Ghaffar yeah, Al is full of forgiveness and Al-Ghafur, uh, most forgiving, yes? He's a lafu, we know, effacer of sins, wiping them out. But we've got to do our bit. And our bit is really very minor in comparison to what we gain. You know, it's, it's that beautiful hadith when the Prophet said that Allah says that um, um, when, when my slave approaches me by a hand span, I approach him by an arm's length. When he approaches me by arm's length, I approach him by a fathom's length, two outstretched arms. When he comes to me walking, I go to him running. So we've got to do our bit, you see. And then the Ramadan Muslims, really that hadith, the end of that hadith, very clear. The acts which are most loved by Allah are the consistent ones, even if small. So, you know, if we've done all these great things during Ramadan, and then we just switch it all off, we think, go back to life as normal. There's something wrong in our thinking. Consistency. It's key. So, and, and the first bit of the hadith, uh, for all of us, right, take aim. We've got to make, we've got to try, haven't we? We've got to try. Yes. So it addresses the neglectful. It addresses the Ramadan Muslims. It addresses the high achievers as well. Because don't think, as I said before, that somehow we earn Jannah through our deeds. It's Allah's Rahmah that saves us. So we've got to be willing to embrace His Rahmah. You see. We've got to accept. We've got to see it. And for the rest of us, I guess, we may say, well, alhamdulillah, you know, as it says in the hadith, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Be happy. You know, we don't have to achieve perfection. We're not required to be perfect. You know, we, we try. Let's try. At least have the intentions. Make effort, inshallah, and be of good cheer. Inshallah. Inshallah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah ashadu wa la ilaha illallahu wa ahdahu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu rasuluh sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in So I hope, I hope those bits of advice really uh, are inshallah benefit. I mean, as I say, even though we, I talk in terms of these different categories, this is not to cause division or anything of that nature amongst us. We all belong to all of those categories to some extent, you know, but... So different people need to focus on different things, different bits of advice. So, uh, and, and, you know, really, let's, 
let's not forget that ibadah is not restricted to the, to the month of Ramadan. I, ibadah, it's, it's continuous, isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hasn't, he hasn't changed. He, he hasn't stopped being our Rahman or our Rahim now that we're out of Ramadan. You know, we make the dua in uh, uh, looking for Laylatul Qadr, that Allahumma inna ka'afun tuhibbul afafafani. Yeah, that dua, that, oh Allah, you are the effacer of sins. He wipes sins clean. And you love to efface sins, so efface my sins. We made that dua for Laylatul Qadr. But Allah hasn't stopped being al-afu. He's still the effacer of sins, you see. So, this is something to just keep in mind. Let's keep it up, inshallah. You know, when I said, what next, or now what? Just keep it up. We can't keep it up to the extent that we did in Ramadan. You know, so some managed to. Yes, we can't do that. It's just not possible, because the shayateen are back. And so they're making their noise. They're making their noises, their whispers, and their invitations, and their calls, and their orders. And we can feel it, can't we not? Really, we see it in our own behavior, yes. So we can't, and there are other reasons why we can't keep it up that level. We should try and keep it up, inshallah, to some extent, inshallah. And we pray, and we ask Allah to make it possible for all of us to experience another Ramadan, inshallah, and another one after that, and many, many Ramadans. We ask, oh Allah, make it possible for all of us to experience Ramadan again and again, and our families and our relatives uh, again and again and again. أَقُولُ قَالِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ عَيْنُهُ وَغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَمَلَائِكَتَهُ يُسَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ يَا يُحَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا تقبل منا إن كنت السميع العليم الله accept this from us for you're the all hearing the all knowing وتوب علينا إن كنت تواب إبراهيم and turn to us in mercy for you are the accept of repentance the most merciful ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذابنا الله Lord grants us good in this world and good in the hereafter and save us from the punishment of the fire. Our Lord, we have wronged ourselves and if you do not forgive us and have mercy on us, we'll indeed be amongst the losers. O Allah, accept all our deeds, all our good deeds during Ramadan that we made and make it possible for us to experience Ramadan again and again and again and Provide us, O oh Allah, with the wonderful opportunities that you have provided us. And Allah, forgive us and be merciful to us. And help us to be consistent. Help us to be consistent. Uh, uh, those are the acts which you most love. So help us to be consistent even if our deeds are small. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzati wa mayasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa aqimu salat.